This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In Apex 12, we created a few dynamic LOVs, list of values, that made the use of more than one column in the display column of the LOV. So you can take two or more columns and combine them together and treat them as a single column in the output for an LOV. We'll take a look at that. We also had one of our LOVs combining two tables with an inner join which automatically filters the rows because the rows from one table are only shown if they have a corresponding row in the second table. So you automatically filter some data. We'll see the need for fully qualified column names because if you're going to use two tables in a query and those tables have one or more columns with the same name, then you will need to specify exactly which table to pull the column data from. So I'm going to work in uh, SQL commands, which is part of SQL Workshop, in Apex. So I'm in SQL commands in SQL Workshop, and I also have the notepad file where I copied the SQL code for creating each of the dynamic LOVs that we created at the end of Apex 12. So I will copy this and bring it in so I can execute it. But first, let's look at the syntax. This says select, and remember we list columns in the select clause. But I'm going to list one column, and then I have what's called the pipe, which is it's two vertical bars. The vertical bar is somewhere on the keyboard. It tends to move around. It's not always in exactly the same position. But we're saying last name plus, if you will, and then in single quotes, comma, space, single quotes. I'm taking last name, putting a comma after it, adding a space, then adding the first name, then I'm adding, concatenating, then I'm going to, in single quotes, where I'm just adding literal values, literal text, I'm putting a colon and a space, then I add to that purse underscore ID. All of that combines to be a single column called display. So when I run that column, this is what I see. Last name, comma, first name, colon, space, and then purse ID. If I come back to Notepad and I look at the second code, on this one, this should only give us employees. And to do that, what I've done is I've combined, essentially, it's almost the same code as we had before, except I'm using a second table. So I have last name added, comma, space, to first name added with a colon and a space, and then persons.purse ID, all in one column called display. I'm also doing the return column, persons.purse underscore ID is return. In the front clause, I am using two tables and I'm using an inner join. An inner join takes two tables and puts them together on a common field, primary key field to foreign key field, almost always. Because we have purse ID in both tables, let me bring up that data model. We have purse ID and we have purse ID. I'm working with both these tables. I'm going to join them. And with an inner join, that means I will only see persons, each row for persons that has a corresponding row in employee. If there's a person, which would be a client that doesn't work or volunteer at the animal shelter, if there's a person record that doesn't have an employee record, that automatically is filtered. So back here, we're saying join persons.purse underscore ID equal to employees.purse underscore ID. 
I'm putting the table name in front of the field name here because both persons and employees, both of those tables have a field called purse underscore ID. Let me take one of these off and I'll show you what happens if I don't specify which table. And it actually, in many cases, doesn't matter which table, but you still have to specify for the SQL which one to work with. So if I run this, this is the error I get. Very common. You should get used to debugging this because if you see column ambiguously defined, you have some column name in your code where you need a table name in front of it. And so in this case, I'm joining the person's table with the employee's table. So I put that back in and I run it and I'm seeing last name comma space, first name colon space, purse ID. But I'm also seeing, and see it's limiting my rows. Let's go to 20, I don't know exactly how many, and run this and scroll down. It, there's more than 20 here. So I'm gonna go to 50 and run this and scroll down. And we have 26 rows, 26 rows. If I come in here and take out employees so that I'm not filtering on that and run this, then when I scroll down, I have more than 50 rows. See where it says more than 50 rows available. So I have whatever it was, 26 rows that represent employees, volunteers, veterinarians and I have over 50 rows that represent all people in the person's table. So back at the notepad file, I don't think I need to go through the rest of the SQL coding because what we've done in the first two explains what we're doing in the other two.